Joining us now, editor-in-chief of The Atlantic magazine, James Bennett. The cover of the new double issue features dual pieces, one on the Great Republican Revolt and the other on why America is moving left. Where do we begin, Jack? Well, let's start with the more provocative one. Um, and James, Peter Beinart suggests uh, America's moving left despite the fact that Republicans dominate every branch of government, every level of government, except the presidency. So what's Peter's argument? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, Peter isn't arguing that Republicans aren't going to win, Joe, that they won't continue to win down the ballot and that they won't win the presidency necessarily next time around. What he's arguing is that the, essentially the 50-yard line of our national politics has shifted to the left um, for a number of reasons having to do with so that the next president will basically if it's a republican he'll wind up or she will wind up governing to the left of george w bush if it's a democrat they'll wind up governing to the left of barack obama mark Albert. Mm. so if ted cruz gets elected president he'll govern to the left of george bush yeah, Mark, that's the argument. And it's not necessarily because Cruz, if he is elected, and um, may, want, may well, unlike some of the others running now, want to run, but uh, govern to the right of George Bush. But the res reality, as you know, is he's not going to have the same kind of Democratic um, help in the Senate that George W. Bush was able to count on. Um, because one of the lessons the Democrats, you know, when, when, when Reagan won twice in a row, Democrats took a look at his record and said, actually, this president had a real point on regulation, on taxes. We need to give this, this Republican argument its due. The experience of the Democrats under, the, under George W. Bush was it's yeah. a disaster to give the Republicans their due on those issues. And as a result, the backlash first to George W. Bush. Right. Um, right. And then another, another version of Barack Obama has pushed the Democrats substantially to the left. So Ted Cruz okay. is not going to be able to get any help from Democrats in the Senate. And just real quickly, uh, you, you talk about class becoming a division within the parties as opposed yeah. to between them, which I think is fascinating. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a big argument that David Frum is making in his piece in this issue, that basically, you know, the, 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 the Republicans used to accuse the Democrats of fomenting class warfare, but right now there's a kind of a class war breaking out within the Republican Party. There's a more muted version of it within the Democratic Party, but the base is basically revolting against the donor class. Um, and that's a lot of what you see fueling um, Donald Trump's campaign. Mm -hmm. Mike Barnacle. So, Jim, am I reading Peter right in that he is looking basically to make his argument that the country's moving left? He's looking at demographics and indicating yeah. that over the next few years, uh, voting booths are going to look like the waiting line at Starbucks more than it does now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the, the millennials, yeah. Mike, you know, who are substantially to the left of the rest of the population. Two-thirds of... Um, Republican even, and Democrat millennials. Yeah, yeah, even Republican millennials, two-thirds of them call themselves liberal or mixed. Only a third of them call, of themselves call themselves conservative. And on issue after Im issue, immigration, size of the government, and so forth, millennials are substantially to the, rest, to the left of the rest of the population. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, it's been always thus people start out more liberal when they're young and they become more conservative as, as they age. That's actually not the historical pattern at all. All right, James Bennett, thank you so